Uh, I've been really swamped working on a lot of things right now. I uh, can't wait to share with them, uh, to all of you guys. All right, so check this out. Uh, Bailey Gifford, which is an institutional investor, they just filed their SEC 13, and uh, it does show that they went ahead and sold off, completely cleared their shares, uh, meaning that they no longer own Clover Health. Now, I follow Bailey, you know, uh, um, Billy Gifford for quite some time and you know they were the company that invested in Tesla before Tesla became free cash flow positive now what's interesting here is that they are a UK company and if you look at the UK tax season it's actually doesn't end on December 30th or you know the end of the year it actually ends um, potentially on April 5th so you know, potentially, potentially, this may be a tax loss harvesting. Uh, we don't know yet. But, you know, from my experience, uh, selling a company uh, when it's uh, prioritizing free cash flow and profitability now is quite, um, I would say, not as effective. Now, what's interesting is uh, perhaps maybe they did their own calculation and they found out that Clover will not be full profitability, meaning that income profitability uh, by 2024, 2025, which is exactly where I haven't pinpointed. I believe Clover will be profitable at the end of 2024 to possibly 2025. Now, free cash flow, I think they're going to hit it, uh, I would say, in the mid of 2024. Now, why are, why are we differentiating net income profitability versus free cash flow profitability? Well, it's a lot easier for a company to become free cash flow positive than that is to be net, net income positive. And usually, historically, companies become free cash flow positive first and then net income positive second. And at least those are the companies that I look at, right? An example uh, that we talked about, uh, look up uh, Tesla, look up uh, Enphase, look up AMD, uh, those are company, great companies that you know, so you can kind of see that pattern. Uh, but overall, I did wanted to inform you guys they did sell. Now, uh, you know, they didn't really have that many shares to be honest uh, that are worth a lot now. If you were to look at the um, how much money it actually is, but uh, they were definitely one of those bigger whales, and it would be very. Um, uh, dumb of us to not acknowledge this and to say, okay, well, we have a smart money here going in and uh, selling. Uh, why is this happening? Um, right? Could it be just for tax loss? And it is. They do have a big tax loss on their uh, balance sheet that they could easily remove. And it's not like Clover is going to become profitable tomorrow. So potentially this may just be tax loss and they'll just rebuy back in and they can go ahead and take that tax loss into infinity right but overall that's pretty much what's happened right now uh now does this change my view of the company does this change you know i've already expressed my thoughts about the company i do think they need to be a little bit more um transparent there is a lot of moving parts right now at clover the thing is i think it's hard for them to be transparent because i was looking through the employee uh, reviews. I was just curious, and uh, you know, you guys probably have seen this too. But it's interesting because if you go down to all the bad rated comments, um, there was quite a few from the sales team, and the sales team were saying, "Oh, these are terrible people to work for X, Y, and Z." And then there was just one honest reviewer that said, "You know, honestly, I had a great time working at Clover. It's a shame that they laid off the sales team." without really any warning. And, and so, so I think what happened was uh, a couple of the salespeople got really upset. One of them was like, they just lost over $100 million. They're a terrible company. And they just, I think they just wanted to just kind of get at them. Uh, so I think that's what that was. But overall, they are doing a lot of changes right now. Um, they, they, they definitely are. Um, so I had to fly here. Uh, it's just it would be nice if they could communicate those changes. But uh, what what does communicate changes is, is the balance sheet, is the statement of cash flows, uh, is the income statement. Those communicate exactly what they're doing. And that's what I'm going to be looking at for Q1 
of the first quarter of 2023. Now, this is going to be important, guys. This is going to be an important quarter. I'm not going to be hosting it live, but we're going to go ahead and do a recap and an analysis. Uh, so that's this is going to be interesting to see. We'll do better videos in June, July. Um, but overall, uh, that is what I'm looking at. And I also want to basically uh, see uh, what... Uh, are they projecting for 2023? Because they have to give us a little bit more information about what they're projecting. Now, what I don't like about what they're doing, is, and I've made my comments very clear, if there's a petition you guys want to sign, go for it. But, you know, it's very clear that they need to talk more about the Clover Assistant, and they need to show exactly how it works. Because if you, you know... If you have OpenAI, which is just a company that has been around for a while, that but popped out out of nowhere and took the world by surprise in showing how their AI model can act can accurately predict X, Y, and Z, then potentially uh, they should be releasing this uh, uh, and publishing their results and showing us exactly what their vision is. This is something that's going to be very clear. Uh, um, and the you know Wall Street has communicated it really heavily. So I got a comment here. I'm gonna see. I'm terrible with the phone here. Um, I'm on a honeymoon. Are we still good with Clover? I'm a long-term investor, so I guess. Yeah, no, no. I'm 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 definitely sticking. It's just a one institutional investor, and I think it's for tax loss harvesting. Um, other than that, nothing has changed. It's gotten better uh, in terms of uh, it lost less money from 2021 to 2022. If you look at the company now and compare it to how it used to be, uh, it's improved dramatically. The only thing that's changed is, you know, interest rates are very high right now. Real estate is very expensive to own if you were to do it now. Commercial real estate is at a near-time crisis and inflation is pretty sticky. I mean, that's the only thing that's honestly changed. So the valuation models have changed. Uh, in fact, there was a ha there was a um, building in, uh, was it San Francisco? That what used to be in the height of the pandemic, three hundred million dollars. Now it's being sold at uh, or valued at sixty million dollars. So you know we're definitely seeing some changes within the evaluation of things and uh, profitability and uh, val value is uh, superseding that of growth, which this company understands and and it's making those changes. Uh, sometimes I get stressed looking at my portfolio. Yeah, so you know this could be a good learning lesson to all the folks that. That um, uh, you know, got in in 2020. Um, that started investing. You know, this is a good example. Like, you know, being invested in the market, people don't understand that there's like a psychological toll. People get stressed out. Uh, you know, there are some people out there that don't even like they like, like canceled their uh, vacation with their family, or they essentially didn't even go on vacation because they were so busy. So not busy, but just stressed, looking at their portfolio and just continuously checking it. Um, maybe do extra due diligence or so. Well, there's nothing really you can do if there's an economic downturn or bear market. It's actually a great time to buy. I mean, that's the only thing you can do if, obviously, you believe in the fundamentals and the outlook of the company. It's just so. Uh, I, I think personally, if you find yourself um, like that. You know, it's on. It's no way to live. Uh, to 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 be, because for me, there's days where I don't even check the Clover stock price. I, I don't even check. I'm like, okay, I'm holding it. It's not. I'm doing other things. You know, the point of having your money, uh, um, you know, invested and, and and working for you, is the fact that then you can take your mind and go in and work for something else. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm working hard for my career as a doctor. And that is going to be helpful because once I'm done with said publications, working hard and getting my name out there in the scientific community and being, a, being an integral part of moving the field of neurosurgery forward into the fourth industrial era, I have my money working for me. So I don't have to work for the money, if that makes sense. But if you're constantly checking and checking and checking, then you're destroying the um, uh, the beauty of the whole, uh, you know, investing and 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 earning that 
that I would say passive income because the, the company's working for you. Um, so that's something that, that, that uh, you know, if, if you can't stomach that, then I would say an index fund would be definitely great. In fact, for me, I would say, you know, 60 to 70% index fund and the rest active, honestly. Uh, and then if you can spare 5% to just gamble in penny stocks if you want to have fun with that. Uh, if you haven't had time to go to Vegas, then okay. But 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 be careful with that because there's no way to live. And I believe I just saw a comment um, in the comment section regarding uh, uh, just keeps stupid fly keeps uh, messing with me. Uh, we just made a barbecue here, uh, so it's probably that. Um, a you uh, let's see here um, this comment. YouTube is terrible with these comments. Uh, uh, let's see here. It's a roller coaster. It will only hurt you if you jump off. Um, yeah, no, exactly. Uh, you covered, uh, can you cover them again? They make, uh, yeah, I'll definitely take a look at it. It was probably a short squeeze um, because usually those farm companies, you got to get in, you got to read the charts. There's really no fundamentals. They're usually always free cash flow negative and no clear sight to profitability. Um, but I'll take a look at it. Uh, put it down in the stock terminal. There's a section we have in the stock terminal. Um, but yeah, I, I unfortunately have been very busy lately um, regarding my medical uh, c c career. Uh, but we do have a platform where you can do, you can put input those and do the, the, due diligence on that ticker, which will give you the technicals, the short volume, the shorts, institu institutional owners, pretty much everything you need. Uh, we have a seven-day free trial if you want to go check it out. There'll be a link down below. You can cancel anytime. Um, it's just a, there I created for the retail community uh, so they can get more educated uh, financial sounding information rather than what's out there in the, in the, uh, on the internet. All right, guys. Well, I just wanted to update you on the matter. Uh, we'll continue to keep following this. Uh, but the biggest thing that I'm looking at really is profitability and free cash flow. That is the big mamba. That is the thing that's going to determine if this company is going to stay or not, or does it have a prospect. They need to prove their business model. And it, it, they're working hard every single day. They're working really hard to change things, restructure the business. Um, they are not going to be bailed out by investors anymore. That's it. It's done. The, the, the music has stopped. Everyone sat down. And if Clover does not find a seat in the profitability room of the presentation of Wall Street, then it will be removed. That's pretty much basically what's going to happen if they don't prioritize profitability, but they are, and they've mentioned profitability a countless times. Just look at the earnings call, graph the word profitability over the past earnings calls, and you can see there was a, there is an increase. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege and honor. I will see you on the next one.